Hello everybody, I am a developer here at EV Technology and today I'll be demonstrating the OCPI uh, version 2.1.1 engine uh, for the CPO and EMSB side of the communication. So uh, for the uh, EMSB engine for OCPI, we at EV Technology have implemented the versions, versions details, credentials and location module. For the CPO side of the OCPI 2.1.1 engine, we have implemented the versions, version details, and credentials. These three modules are sufficient to undertake the OCPI handshake, which secures the communication between a CPO and EMSB over the OCPI protocol. This is the largest stumbling block in the OCPI implementation process and takes up to 60% of the development time. Just to demonstrate that we have the uh, various mentioned modules in each engine for OCPI, I'll be using Postman to demonstrate that the endpoints do work, indicating that that module for OCPI has been implemented correctly. Now, if we first look here, I'll be demonstrating first the versions module for uh, the EMSP engine. So if I submit a GET request, I get a response of the version of OCPI I have implemented and the URL that relates to the version of OCPI uh, for the EMSB engine. As you can see here, this communication requires an authorization token to be included in the header for that communication. This is standard for all the uh, communications over OCPI. Moving on to the version's details, Similarly, I can use that URL that was given in the versions. Um, it, it gives a response from the uh, from the versions request to find out about what modules of OCPI have been implemented on the EMSP side. So similarly, I send a uh, GET request, and I should be getting a response which communicates to me the modules of OCPI which have been implemented on the EMSP engine. So as you can see here the credentials module has been implemented and this is the url in which to interact with that uh, module for the uh, ocpi version 2.1.1 for the emsb side um, and if i want to interact again with that uh, credentials module similarly i can send a get request again including the authorization header information and i should be getting information around the company which implemented the EMSP engine, which in this case is EV Technology. And this is the URL in which to um, communicate initially over OCPI with EV Technology for, uh, uh, yeah, for OCPI. And at the bottom here, it gives information if you want to communicate with us. This is the token information you must include in the authorization header. Now, moving on to the CPO side or a CPO engine of the OCPI, we've implemented the versions, versions details, and credentials. So as before, we submit a GET request, and you should get a response of the version of OCPI for the CPO engine, which in this case is version 2.1.1, and this is the URL in which to interact with. Moving on to the version details, similarly sending a GET request, and we will get a response this time of the modules of OCPI, uh, which have uh, which have been implemented for version 2.1.1 for the CPO engine. So you can see here again the credentials module is implemented. Finally, moving on to the credentials module itself, similar to the EMSP engine, this gives you information of the company which has implemented the uh, CPO engine. In this case, we have named the company Drax Test. We given it a party ID, and this again is the URL in which to start all the OCPI communications over. Finally, with the token information, you must include in the authorization, authorization header in order for the communication to be secure. Now, um, the next bit I'll be moving on to will be um, demonstrating actually the kind of uh, information that is collected by using the OCPI communications uh, and all of this is stored in a MySQL database.
So as promised, we're moving on to the information captured in a MySQL database over uh, during the OCPI um, protocol. So uh, this information all shown here is the information captured by the EMSB during the OCPI uh, communication. So if we first start with the version of OCPI uh, that was communicated to the EMSB during the OCPI protocol, we can see, for example, if we're communicating with party IHO, they have implemented three versions of OCPI, 1.9, 2.0, and 2.1.1. And this is in which the URLs that is passed in that JSON body to continue the interaction for OCPI to find out information about the modules of OCPI implemented by the party. Similarly, this um, party drags has implemented version 2.1.1, and this is the URL in which to collect information on the modules implemented. You will also find here um, the EMSP party, which is EV technology here, has implemented version 2.1.1. The reason why this is stored here is to ensure that when the EMSP needs to communicate with the CPO on the version of OPCPI that it has implemented, this information is taken from this same database table. Now moving on to the version's details. So um, beginning first with the party IHO. Uh, if we're only interested in getting information around um, version 2.1.1 they've implemented, we can see they've implemented the credentials, sessions, locations, CDRs, and tokens. And these are the URL endpoints into which to interact with those um, implemented modules by AHO. If we move on to the DRX party, we can see that it implemented the credentials module for version 2.1.1, and this is the uh, endpoint in which to interact with. Remember that we're talking about the EMSP here in, term, in terms of the site of the communication, so the EMSP engine. So we will also need to store information around what um, modules that we as the EMSP has implement, have implemented and in what version of OCPI. So you can see here is the credentials module version two uh, for the OCPI version 2.1.1, and this is the uh, URL which to interact with. This again is used to populate the JSON response when interacting with the version details module for the EMSP engine. Uh, finally, you will also notice that there's a version N slash A for all three parties. The reason this is here is that this is actually the information that is shared initially offline during the OCPI communication so that um, the party, usually the EMSP that's, in, that's interested in initiating the OCPI handshake with the CPO, they know uh, in which which, mod, uh, which URL to go to to start that communication, which is the versions module. Similarly, the EMSP also will need to implement that uh, when doing that handshake procedure after collecting information from the CPO, they will need to share their versions, uh, their versions endpoint first to start that information exchange and collection by the CPO. Um, if we finally move on to the uh, company details, which serves to support the credentials module, you can see that uh, for the party CPO, sorry, so for the uh, for the parties IHO and DRX, we're able to see their company name and their roles in which the communication, which they're both CPOs in this sense, as we are talking about the EMSP side of the engine. We can also see the uh, token in which they share during uh, the initial part of the OCPI communication in terms of the information shared offline so we can start communicating with the endpoints. Now this token will be updated during the OCPI handshake procedure. Um, you can also see here the EMSP token in which this is the token that the EMSP here, EV technology, has provided to the CPO during the OCPI handshake procedure so that they'll be able to communicate with uh, the EV Tech's uh, OCPI modules. Um, there are a few, two, there are actually two extra bits that we've added to OCPI to help support um, the, um, the smooth running of the process and also for diagnostic purposes. The first would be the error logs in which there are incidents, there may be incidences where um, the URL endpoints are updated or OCPI modules are no longer maintained or taken off by another party. So um, in the case where communication happens to these channels that are no longer available, we capture the HTTP response 
in terms of the status code and which OCPI module is affected so we know uh, so we have understanding of what is happening during that communication and why it has gone wrong um, similarly we also actually for all um, uh, OCPI communications we actually capture all the responses even if they're successful so we catch, uh, capture the header information the body and the status code this information collection is purely optional and it's mainly used for us to check the information that's being shared across to ensure that uh, the party that we're communicating with is complying by the standards set out in OCPI. Now, the next section we'll be moving on to is actually the demonstration of the OCPI handshake. In addition to the three OCPI modules implemented for the EMSP, we've also implemented the location module uh, to collect information around the location of charge points and the connectors uh, associated with those charge points. So over the uh, locations module, uh, we are able to collect information around the opening times of those charges, the uh, physical location of the charge in terms of latitude and longitude, line of address, postcode and the city in which is located as well as the country you can also see that we are collecting uh, whether the uh, charge point is in operation for use or not uh, going a bit one layer uh, one layer deeper into the uh, charge point itself which we're now looking at the connectors associated with those charge points and this information is also communicated over the locations module from here we can see that these are two charge. Uh, these are two connectors associated with a particular um, particular charger, and we can see the information around the voltage associated with in terms of discharge from that connector of that charger and what kind of power type it is, uh, amperage, and the uh, standard and formatting. Um, right, so we move on to the final demonstration around the OCPI handshake. So very briefly to go through the OCPI handshake, um, this happens where a CPO shares the authorization token information with the EMSB in order to, uh, to initiate communications with the CPO engine. Once the, um, once the EMSB has received this header token information, they are able to communicate with the versions, version details, and credentials module, and any other module that has been implemented in order to save the information into the MySQL database that was demonstrated before. Once this is done, the, um, the EMSP will in turn have to generate its own authorization uh, header token information to share with the CPO so that the CPO will be able to communicate with the EMSP engine for all future communications. The CPO will um, test um, not just the authorization token he uh, header sent, but also all the um, API endpoints in terms of the modules of OCPI implemented by the EMSP and save it on their end. So here you can see that um, they were getting responses from making GET requests to the different um, OC, uh, different CPO OCPI endpoints. This is before the handshake procedure has taken place. So once it takes place, this will no longer be valid as the authorization token from before becomes invalidated and needs to be uh, replaced with a new authorization token shared by the CPO to the EMSP during the OCPI handshake procedure. Now, what I wish to communicate here is actually the CPO side uh, in terms of the CPO engine during the uh, OCPI handshake procedure. Before the handshake procedure has taken place, this is the kind of information that will be present on the CPO side in terms of their database. So we have the token they have assigned to the EMSB, here being EV technology, and we can see that the handshake has not taken place yet and a new token information has not been shared with EV technology. Similarly, because the handshake has not taken place, um, no token was given by the EMSB to the CPO and no information 
in terms of anything related to OCPI has been shared by EMSP. Um, for the uh, versions of, sorry, not for the versions, but for the modules of OCPI that have been shared, you can see here that no information is captured in terms of the credentials endpoint, uh, the versions details endpoint, versions endpoint, or even the OCPI versions. Now this um, table will be populated once the OCPI handshake has taken place. Right, we are about to initiate the OCPI um, handshake using a script. I will not show this on screen. So as before, um, after the OCPI handshake, we shouldn't be able to communicate with these three um, CPO OCPI endpoints anymore using the old authorization token header. So as you can see, for each one, when I send a uh, get request or any form of communication, I am denied access to the materials. Right, now using the new authorization token header that was shared by the CPO over the OCPI handshake procedure, we find we're now able to interact with all three endpoints for the CPO. We no longer get that null or any kind of error messages we saw from before. So this has been a demonstration of the OCPI uh, protocol implemented uh, both for the CPO and EMSP side. Um, three modules have been implemented at the very minimum to support the OCPI handshake. This includes the version, version details, and credentials. The location modules has been implemented for the um, EMSP engine in order to collect information around the chargers and the connectors for the chargers. Um, finally, just to mention that the, uh, the OCPI, EMSP, and CPO engine have been implemented on AWS using a mixture of Lambda functions, API uh, gateways, and um, a DynamoDB NoSQL database. Thank you for listening to this demonstration.